Today I have an errand to run, and I'm going to be hopping on the highway shortly here. So I figure, uh, why not fire up the GoPro 8 with its new firmware that allows HyperSmooth 2.0? Uh, we'll see if that makes any difference with uh, image stabilization. And I'm cranked to the full highest bitrate setting, and I'm on 4K mode linear lens. So this should be the best quality possible out of a GoPro Hero 8, and you'll get the visualizations on this Hardware 3 computer uh, that's in this Tesla Model 3 of 2020. I'm pointing here because that's where the computer is, Hardware 3. And you'll see all the latest visualizations as I drive around town, hopefully in a nice uh, crystal clear format. And the uh, lighting's pretty good, and the weather's actually decent for the first time uh, in a while. It's, well, January 5th of 2019. So winter is not the best for driving around and demonstrating stuff, but today seems to be my chance. Sorry, my jackets are sliding around there. All right. Now that we're out of direct sunlight, you can already see a cone showed up, and that was actually a fire hydrant. So you'll see it misidentifies fire hydrants as cones. Um, not garbage day. It's a Sunday, so we're not going to see garbage cans visualizations on this trip. But I do want to get in the highway a little bit to test the software version I'm on. And the sun's going down in like 5-10 minutes, so we don't have a lot of time with the good lighting. But here we go, backlighting. This should be very nice on camera. All right, so I'm on 2019.40.50.7. It's been applied to this car all of uh, two days ago, three days ago, something like that. And we just hit a red light. You're going to see the visualization. It's yellow and then now turning to red. Very nice. So um, let's see the camera angle there. Hopefully you don't have too bad a reflection from the direct backlighting. Not really sure how well you can see that. I look forward to looking at this footage myself when I get back to see if this is a decent view. A two camera view is definitely more complicated to uh, edit and produce and publish. Um, and then you need two GoPros plugged in and batteries or plugged in so they don't run out of battery and two SD cards. It's just a whole lot more work. If this angle gives me everything I want, meaning um, a pretty distant view of stoplights out the window and a pretty distant view of the on screen visualizations, well, then I'm probably pretty happy with it. And there's a Tesla Model 3. Let's uh, give a little wave. And his hand lifted slightly in his sunglasses. <laughs> I don't know if you can see him. Um, I'm going to go straight, actually. I'm going to ignore what the GPS is telling me to do and take a little more scenic route. And you can see the sun's already getting pretty low because we're at the bottom of a hill here. Hopefully the sound is decent with the GoPro. Um, I don't have an external mic adapter or anything for it. Fancy. A lapel mic would probably be better. I turned off the AC blower, so you don't have to hear that as I'm driving around in this 39 degree Fahrenheit weather. And my windshield is reasonably clean. Would have been ideal to have it even cleaner. Uh, but again, working with what I got, which is 10 minutes before the sun sets or so, roughly. All right, here comes a stop sign. Very clearly showing up well in advance. Railroad crossing is not signified with any special markings. Okay, it's a little bit strange because they actually have um, I don't know, even handicap parking spots in some future firmware. So, railroad uh, to the left, there was a railroad crossing sign. I believe those show. My lane did not have one of those painted on it, a big X with an R on either side of the X. So, it doesn't bother with visualizations like that on the opposite side of the street that I'm not driving on. Zoom in. Zoom in. You'll see how silky smooth the GPS image, um, the mapping is. Okay, we got some more street signs showing up. Big American flag there. All right, we're now in Old Wethersfield, Connecticut, where they've filmed some movies for Lifetime and Hallmark. All right, turning right at the stop sign that's clearly marked. Twenty-five mile an hour limit. Now I'm not sure of the setting right now if it's set to go the exact speed limit. Let's see if I'm at twenty-six and I tap twenty-five. Yep, goes down to twenty-five. There you go. So you gotta set the cruise control. Alright, we're getting on the highway here. All right, we're getting near the highway. This is I-91 South, if any of you know Connecticut at all. And we're only gonna be on it for like three miles, but that should be pretty good for some um, 
visualizations on the highway. Now those haven't really changed. We got a good look at around town. Let's see if the do not enter one-way sign up ahead shows up as anything in the visualizations. I don't think it does. I didn't see anywhere that that's in the library of signs that are visible. And a silver Model 3. That was cool. I like silver. It actually does a pretty good job hiding that, that color. They don't have it anymore, but salt actually shows in it pretty much as much as my midnight silver Tesla Model 3. Right now we're in my wife's white Model 3. Again, three weeks old, a 2020 model. Okay, now this car, I'm gonna point something out here. We can now engage, double tap. We're now in autopilot, you got two blue lines. So it's lane keeping, right? So fancy lane keeping though. Um, it's very good at it. And also traffic aware cruise control, it'll change the speed if there's other traffic around. Now, if we wanna change lanes to the left, gotta make sure it's clear first and there's actually a car behind me, so now's not a good time to do that. But anyhow, changing lanes to the left, what I notice is different. My car has the full style driving option where you can hit the left blinker and it'll automatically change lanes for you when it's safe to do so. This car, instead of having any kind of torque to disengage the autopilot, as soon as I turn on the blinker, there is no back pressure on the steering wheel for me to disengage autopilot. The blue lights went off immediately. Okay, re-engage autopilot, blue lights back on. So it's okay, this car is amazing that it actually has the traffic aware cruise control and the excellent lane keeping for the long haul, meaning that wasn't even possible in my car when I got it um, a year ago. Uh, you had to pay for all of that. So I'm so glad even this base model, which is available at a pretty reasonable um, 35 or even lower if you want to go to the standard range, not the standard range plus. All right, turn that back on again. So now the car is driving, right? But I have even pressure on the wheel. The car knows how my hands on the wheel. I'm the one responsible for my driving right now, not the car. And I'm checking traffic to my right. I saw a visualization of a car coming up there. So you, you can use that to glance for a blind spot. But I also use my head. I actually have convex mirrors in my side view mirrors. Okay, my exit's coming up here. So this car is not going to automatically take an exit one because there's no navigator on autopilot with the blue single line, it's a double line. So i got to turn the blinker and take the exit myself, tap up in the stock to disengage cruise control so no one in the car feels a jerk as I tap the brake. I don't need to tap the brake, I can use the stock to do that. And that's it, I manually initiated an exit ramp. So don't have the full self-driving package in this car, don't plan to, this is the around town car. It's seven grand right now, there's no way uh, we can justify that. Mike long range all wheel drive is going to be for the long trips um, okay we should have some more street signs and so forth coming up get a few more visualizations we're going to Coles here to do an Amazon return so now I've got set to 40 right this car will come to a complete stop if the car in front of me stops there's the street signs and you can even move the visualization around a little bit Kind of hoping I'll hit another red light for you here to show that the uh, cruise control is excellent at bringing the car to a complete stop very smoothly without any jerking motion of your head. And that's just not going to happen. Oh well. I have another video actually showing that, one pedal driving included. So as I conclude this little uh, jaunt around town testing out the GoPro Hero and the latest software in the car that did an excellent job lane keeping with no ping pong, no roaming, like one foot plus and minus down the middle of the lane on the highway, it just felt really good. Um, so yeah, that was good, and the visualizations seem to be spot on so far for everything I captured, but I wasn't really looking at the screen very much. And now with the voice controls, uh, you, there's very rarely do you need to reach over and touch the screen for much of anything in this car anymore. So as I come to a complete stop, uh, you probably can't see my foot the way the camera is situated, but when I come to a complete spot, stop, a lovely sunset here. You just let go of the accelerator pedal and the car will come all the way down to zero smoothly. No head jerking, no noise. It does an excellent job at one pedal driving. I didn't use the, need to use the brake. Even the regen in this cold weather, which is not very high. I can see these little dots here showing the battery's not fully warmed up yet. Even in this low regen scenario, the car does a very good job at um, stopping more smoothly than you probably can. 
In other words, your passenger's heads don't lunge forward as the car comes down from one mile an hour all the way to zero. It's uh, really good at that. All right, that's it for this uh, look at visualizations. Look around town here. And as we wrap this video, uh, thank you for watching.